किसी ने क्या खूब कहा है योगा एज इयर्स टू योर लाइफ एंड लाइफ टू योर इयर्स जिंदगी में बैलेंस बहुत जरूरी है चाहे वो प्रोफेशनल एंड पर्सनल लाइफ हो या माइंड और बॉडी क्योंकि आपने सुना तो होगा ही कि योगा से होगा वेलकम टू द इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ योगा सेलिब्रेशन माइंड बॉडी सोल फ्रॉम एच टी हेल्थ शॉर्ट्स अ प्रीमियम डिजिटल हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल यू वीमेन आउट देर योगा हैज बीन अराउंड फॉर एवर बट सिंस द पास फ्यू ईयर्स वी हैव सीन इट बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ एवरी वन लाइफ with people realizing that health is the real wealth at health shots we do believe in the power of yoga to strike the balance we need for our mind body and soul in this exclusive yoga day special health shots brings to you some of the best experts and influencers to talk about the relevance and importance of yoga the first in line is grandmaster akshar an internationally acclaimed yogic guru who believes in building a world where everyone is safe strong and valued aaiye sunte hain yoga ki kahani grandmaster akshar ki zubani dosto swagat hai aapka millennials ke ek matra health and wellness destination health shots par antarrashtriya yog divas ke upalaksh mein health shots ke is vishesh aayojan mein hamare saath hai himalaya se akshar ग्रैंड मास्टर अक्षर के नाम से लोकप्रिय हिमालय सिद्ध अक्षर वर्ल्ड योगा फाउंडेशन और अंतरराष्ट्रीय सिद्धा फाउंडेशन के अध्यक्ष हैं। इस लंबे यात्रा में उन्होंने अभी तक 10 लाख से ज्यादा लोगों को योग की शिक्षा दी है वे आध्यात्मिक गुरु प्रेरक और लेखक भी हैं। तो आपका और ज्यादा समय न लेते हुए आइए सीधे चलते हैं ग्रैंड मास्टर अक्षर के पास और जानते हैं योग योग दिवस और योग की लंबी यात्रा के बारे में उनके अनुभव अक्षर स्वागत है आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद योगिता जी अक्षर बहुत ज्यादा इधर उधर की बात ना करते हुए मैं सीधे पूछती हूँ क्योंकि आपका एक बहुत लंबा अभ्यास है योगा में आपके लिए असल में योग क्या है आप योग को कैसे परिभाषित करना चाहेंगे तो योग तो बहुत बड़ा विषय है और एक परिभाषा से बात नहीं बनेगी लेकिन जब आप सीधे सीधे पूछते हैं कि हम क्या समझते हैं तो हर अभ्यास करने वाले का अपना एक पर्पस हो जाता है योगा को लेके तो मेरे लिए योगा जीवन का संपूर्ण कल्याण है जब जीवन पूरी तरह से आप जी लेंगे समझ लेंगे वही योगा है बहुत सुंदर हिमालय से अक्षर आप बहुत लंबे समय से योगा प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं लेकिन 2015 के बाद से ये सिनारियो बिल्कुल बदल गया एक बरसों पुरानी भारतीय योगिक परंपरा थी जो अब जन जन का अभ्यास बन गई है तो आप तब से अब तक किस तरह के बदलाव योगा के क्षेत्र में महसूस कर रहे हैं तो बड़ा आ, पर्सनल अनुभव रहा इस शिफ्ट को देखते हुए क्योंकि दो से पहले अब हमारे स्कूल थे योगा के इंस्टीट्यूशन चल रहे हैं तो लेकिन एक जो कहते हैं कि प्रभाव नहीं है संसार में उस तरह से चल रहा था जीवन लेकिन जैसे ही फिर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने इसको यूनाइटेड नेशन में रखा योगा डे के लिए और उसके बाद कैसे योगा को यूनेस्को ने हेरिटेज बनाया तो उसके बाद तो एक बात ही बदल गई है योगा को आप उस तरह से नहीं देख सकते जैसे हम पहाड़ों पे करने वाले योगी हैं या साधु ऐसे दह या अभ्यास करने वाले हैं अब जितने आप समझदार होंगे उतना ही समझा जाता है कि आप योगा में उतने ही आगे बढ़ रहे होंगे तो आपकी समझ को योगा माना गया है बिल्कुल सही लेकिन वो वो ऐसा क्या खास था जिसने योग को जन जन में लोकप्रिय बना दिया इसमें हम भगवद गीता का रेफरेंस लेंगे उसमें भगवान कहते हैं यत यत आचरती श्रेष्ठा तत तत देव तरजना जैसे बड़ा कोई आचरण करेगा पूरी संसार फिर उसको फॉलो करती है आपने देखा होगा जब एक टाइम आया था मार्शल आर्ट का ब्रूसली का तो कुछ उन्होंने अपना जो अपना फाइट करने का जो उनका तरीका था वो कुछ मिनटों के लिए दिखाया लेकिन पूरे संसार में वो फेमस हो गया क्योंकि एक बड़ा आदमी का था ऐसे फिर आप एक बड़े विश्व प्रसिद्ध डांसर रहे माइकल जैक्सन तो कुछ उन्होंने किया तो पूरे विश्व में उसको फिर फॉलो किया गया ऐसे ही जब कोई बड़ा कोई कार्य करता है तो स्वर सारा संसार उसको समझने की कोशिश करता है उसमें और गहरा जाने की कोशिश करता है तो दो वो समय था 
बिल्कुल सही मुझे भी ऐसा ही महसूस होता है लेकिन एक चीज और है कि अगर हम इसी को आदर्श मान लें तो मैंने देखा है कि ज्यादातर योगा बूट कैंप हो या योगी हो वो सब पहाड़ों पर जाना चाहते हैं और आप खुद हिमाचल प्रदेश से हैं तो क्या वाकई पहाड़ों की आबो हवा में ऐसा कुछ खास है जो वहाँ योगा के लिए ज्यादा बेहतर माहौल मिल पाता है हर चीज के लिए एक स्थान होता है अगर आपने नृत्य करना है तो उसके लिए भी एक स्थान होता है आपने खेलना है तो खेलने का स्थान है आपने भोजन खाना है तो भोजन का स्थान है कहीं भी खा सकते हैं कहीं भी डांस कर सकते हैं कहीं भी खेल सकते हैं लेकिन इसके लिए अगर स्पेसिफिक ग्राउंड हो जैसे आप देखेंगे अब तो स्कूल कॉलेज में इसका बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंस दी जाती है कि हमारे पास खेल का मैदान तो हम ये भी कह सकते हैं खेल के मैदान क्यों आप अपने क्लासरूम में खेल लीजिए तो मैदान बनाने का अर्थ है कि अब आप इसके लिए बड़े सीरियस हैं आप इस चीज को आगे बढ़ाना चाहते हैं ऐसे ही दिव्य हिमालय या पहाड़ ये योग और आध्यात्म के लिए मानिए कि एक स्पेसिफिक प्लेस हो जाएगा आप जब वहाँ जाएंगे तो आपके सर्वर नहीं जुड़ते जितना आप हाई आल्टीट्यूड में चलते चले जाएंगे सर्वर कम होते चले जाते हैं तो बस फिर आप रह जाते हैं तो आप कितना अपने अंदर गहरा जाना चाहते हैं समझना चाहते हैं अपने आप को आगे बढ़ाना चाहते हैं उस सब के लिए आपको बड़ा उचित स्थान मिल जाता है पहाड़ों हिमालय सिद्ध हैं आप तो वो क्या चीज़ है जो माहौल या आबो हवा के अलावा जो जिसका योग में जरूर ध्यान रखना चाहिए जो योग के लिए सबसे ज्यादा अनिवार्य चीज है योग के लिए शरणागति सबसे बड़ी मानी गई है कि ज्ञान के प्रति आप शरण में जाएं जब आपको कोई सिखा रहा है तो बस आप ऊपरी ऊपरी से सीख के या बस जितना मेरे से रिलेटेड है उतना ही मैं समझ लूँ उससे बात नहीं बनेगी अगर आपने योगा को पूरी तरह से सीखना है तो आपको पूरी तरह से सरेंडर होना पड़ता है नॉलेज को और जब आप सरेंडर होते हैं नॉलेज को आप हंड्रेड परसेंट आगे बढ़ते हैं एक्चुअली ये सभी फील्ड में है आप कहीं नाचना सीखना चाहते हैं या कोई कला सीखना चाहते हैं कुछ ड्राइंग सीखना चाहते हैं आपको सिखाने वाले की शरण में जाना होता है तो ये एक तरह से लॉ मान के चले हिमालय पर है या पहाड़ों पर है कि योग आध्यात्म को सीखने के लिए हमें ज्ञान की शरण में जाना चाहिए आप उन लोगों के लिए क्या कहेंगे जो मेरे जैसे युवा स्त्रिया हैं और जिनके पास बहुत सारा काम है पूरा टाइम वो या तो प्रोफेशनल टारगेट में बिजी रहती हैं या उनका पर्सनल लाइफ के बहुत सारे स्ट्रेस होते हैं तो युवा काम का जो स्त्रियों के लिए योग कैसे काम कर सकता है वो कितना समय उसके लिए डिवोट कर सकते हैं कम से कम भी आधा घंटा तो ज़रूर डिवोट करना पड़ेगा और अब क्या होता है कि क्योंकि होम मेकर स्पेशली अगर आप बात करें उनके लिए ज़्यादा मेहनत होती है क्योंकि बहुत काम होता है अगर मान लीजिए मान लीजिए मैं कॉर्पोरेट लाइफ में हूँ तो वहाँ पे एक ड्यूरेशन होती है कि आप 9 बजे आइए और 6 बजे जाइए लेकिन होम मेकर का कोई टाइम नहीं होता उसको चौबीस बार सेवन लगातार काम करते रहना होता है दोनों ही स्थिति में शरीर शक्तिशाली होना जरूरी है और कम से कम आधा घंटा तो जरूर देना होगा अब उसमें शरीर का जो अभ्यास है वो करना चाहिए मन का अभ्यास है जिसमें ध्यान आएगा प्राणायाम आएगा उसका अभ्यास करना चाहिए आत्मबल बड़ा मजबूत होना चाहिए क्योंकि अब क्या होता है जब हम अगर स्त्री की बात करें तो एक तो बहुत इमोशनल एनर्जी माना जाता है स्त्री को कि बहुत भावुक होती है तो आपको अपने इमोशन के ऊपर कैसे कंट्रोल लेनी होगी नहीं तो छोटी छोटी चीज आपको तोड़ देगी तीस मिनट का अभ्यास हमारे लिए बहुत आवश्यक होगा अक्षित आप दुनिया भर में घूमते हैं योग के साथ आप योग के ब्रांड एम्बेसडर है तो दक्षिण कोरिया जापान चीन ये भी उन प्राचीन संस्कृतियों वाले देश हैं। उनके पास भी बहुत सारे ऐसे अभ्यास हैं। उनसे हमारा योग कितना अलग है या क्या एक, एक जैसी चीजें हैं या कुछ कॉमन है सब कुछ कॉमन तो हम नहीं कहेंगे लेकिन हाँ थोड़ा मिलता जुलता जरूर है और भारत को अगर आप कहें कि भारत मेक इन इंडिया को लेके बड़ी बात होती है पूरे देश में भारत ने वास्तव में यदि कुछ बनाया है या कुछ दिया है संसार को तो वो योग और आध्यात्म इसमें हम किसी भी प्रकार का दूसरा विचार नहीं कर सकते कि वहाँ दूसरे देश में कुछ और होगा अब जैसे आपने चाइना का नाम दिया जब भी हमारा जाना होता है वहाँ पे तो वहाँ के जो वृद्ध अभ्यास करने वाले हैं उनका भी मानना है कि जो भी वो चीज़ें सीख रहे हैं सिखा रहे हैं जैसे मार्शल आर्ट जो वहाँ पे बहुत फेमस है शाउलिन कुम्फू जो बहुत फेमस है वहाँ पे उसके जनक भी भारत से ही माने गए तो योग से संबंधित मर्म चिकित्साओं से संबंधित आयुर्वेद से संबंधित ये सारी जितनी भी विद्याएं हैं इसका जनक जो है भारत को ही माना जाता है 
फिर यहाँ से जब चीजें बाहर पहुंचती हैं तो उनका नाम बदल जाता है उस जगह का जैसा समय है काल है परिस्थिति है उस अनुसार वो उसका उपयोग करते हैं जो बहुत अच्छा है लेकिन आ, किसी भी तरह से हम इसको कंपेयर नहीं कर पाएंगे क्योंकि जड़ जड़ होती है बहुत सुंदर शब्द अक्षर आपने अभी इस्तेमाल किया मर्म चिकित्सा योग ओवरऑल आपका उपचार करता है मानसिक भावनात्मक शारीरिक लेकिन इसके बावजूद हम देखते हैं कि कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं जो बरसों से योगा अभ्यास कर रहे हैं मगर उन्हें वो फायदा नहीं मिल पाता क्या इसकी वजह कुछ मिस्टेक्स हैं कुछ गलतियां हो सकती हैं कि क्यों योग से उनको लाभ नहीं हो पाता ऐसा तो होगा ही नहीं ये तो बिल्कुल असंभव वाली बात हो जाएगी यदि कोई व्यक्ति डिसिप्लिन में योग अभ्यास कर रहा है वो आगे ही बढ़ेगा ऐसा होगा ही नहीं कि उसको उसका लाभ नहीं मिल रहा है अब आप अगर कहें मैंने अभी कुछ समय पहले मैं कुछ प्रैक्टिशनर से मिला और थेरेपेटिक ट्रेनिंग इनके चल रही थी और इनका काम चल रहा था सियाटिका को लेकर तो जब हमने इनसे बात की तो इन्होंने कहा सियाटिका ठीक नहीं हो रही और एग्रीवेट होते चले जा रही है तो हम थोड़ी देर बैठे और उनसे बातचीत की कि क्या कर रहे हैं वो तो मेरे लिए आश्चर्य हो गया कि उनका आरंभ सूर्य नमस्कार से हो रहा है मतलब वो अपने आप को ठीक कर रहे हैं सियाटिका के लिए सूर्य नमस्कार से तो अब यहाँ पर मैं ये नहीं कहूँगा कि योग से उनकी तबीयत खराब हो रही है उनकी गलती है सूर्य नमस्कार में जो बैक बैंड है हस्तान आसन जिसे कहा जाता है वो तो बैक और प्रेशर देगा तो जब आप जो चीज थोड़ी सी कमजोर है जहाँ पर आपको कुछ समस्या है आप उसे और प्रेशर देंगे तो आपकी स्थिति और खराब तो इसके लिए सही समय पर सही दवा लेना यह हमारे लिए बड़ा जरूरी होगा अच्छा एक एक सवाल और मैं आपसे पूछना चाहूंगी कि जैसे शुरुआत में हमने कहा एक आइडियल स्पेस होता है आइडियल जगह होती है क्या योग शुरू करने की कोई आइडियल एज भी है या आप कभी भी योग शुरू कर सकते हैं आप जितना जल्दी शुरू करेंगे उतना आपके लिए अच्छा लेकिन इसमें कभी देर नहीं होगी क्योंकि अगर आप इसके विज्ञान में जाएं तो ये आपके आपके स्वभाव के ऊपर प्रभाव करता है और स्वभाव भी मेरा आगे का जीवन होगा जैसा मैं अभी सोच रहा हूँ ऐसा ही मेरा कल तैयार होने वाला है जैसा मैं कल सोचूंगा उसका अगला वैसे ही तैयार होगा तो योग जो है वो आपकी फिजिकल बॉडी मेंटल बॉडी आपकी स्पिरिचुअल बॉडी तीनों के ऊपर प्रभाव डालता है उससे आपके विचार बदलते हैं मान लीजिए आप बड़े उदास हैं स्ट्रेस में हैं डिप्रेशन में हैं थोड़ा योगाभ्यास करेंगे थोड़ा प्राणायाम करेंगे थोड़ा ध्यान करेंगे आपका मन प्रफुल्लित हो जाएगा आप जोश में आ जाएंगे आपका मन करेगा मैं कुछ बड़ा करूँ कुछ विशेष करूँ खुश रहेंगे आप प्रसन्न चित्र रहेंगे तो योग जो है वो कभी भी शुरू कर सकते हैं आपको लाभ ही देगा ये कुछ आसन है जैसे वज्रासन है वज्रासन आप कभी भी करें आपको लाभ ही वो आपके सीधा सीधा आपके उधर को प्रभावित करता है स्टमक को स्टिमुलेट करता है हमारा ब्लड फ्लो जो है किस प्रकार से हमारा डाइजेशन होगा ब्लड किस तरह से रेगुलेट होगा उसके ऊपर प्रभाव डालता है तो योग के अंदर आप जो भी चीजें देखेंगे उनका बड़ा चमत्कारी प्रभाव है हमारे ऊपर तो हम इसको एक जगह रोक नहीं सकते कि बस जब आपकी इतनी उम्र होगी तभी आपको योग करना है बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत अच्छी बातचीत रही आपसे और अब हम कार्यक्रम के अंतिम पड़ाव तक पहुंच गए हैं और मैं जानना चाहूंगी कि आप हेल्थ शॉट्स के युवा व्यूअर्स युवा लिसनर्स के लिए अंतर्राष्ट्रीय योग दिवस पर क्या मैसेज देना चाहेंगे तो सबसे पहले तो सभी दर्शकों को अंतर्राष्ट्रीय योग दिवस की बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं एक फेस्टिवल जैसा है उत्सव जैसा है तो जैसे आप दिवाली मनाते हैं होली मनाते हैं वैसे ही इसको मनाइए ज़रूर कुछ ना कुछ ज़रूर करिएगा आज के दिन जब आप कुछ करेंगे तो आपका मन होता है कि चलिए आप शुरू कर दिया पूरे जीवन भर करते रहेंगे और क्योंकि आप कहते हैं युवा दर्शक हैं तो युवा ही रहे जीवन भर ऐसा हमारा संकल्प हो जाए तो युवा रहने का अर्थ क्या है बालों की सफेदी से कोई चिंता नहीं कि मेरा उम्र होते जा रही उससे कोई चिंता नहीं है मन प्रसन्न रहे आप सदैव मुस्कुराते रहे किसी भी चीज की चिंता ना लें आप ऐसा मैं आप सबके लिए प्रार्थना करता हूं और ऐसा आपका जीवन हो जाए इसके लिए मैं चाहता हूं कि आप सब योग और आध्यात्मिक की यात्रा पर जल्द से जल्द आगे बढ़े बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत आभार बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद योगिता जी प्रणाम Hope you like Grandmaster Akshar's interview. Wasn't it great? Now let's move on to our next segment where two of the most versatile fitness influencers are sharing their take on yoga. It's time to meet three-time national champion Aisha Bilamoria and yogini Sunaina Rekhi.
downward facing dog not only is this a full mobility exercise for the body but it also opens up the hamstring calf shoulder mid back and lower back rabbit pose one of the most efficient poses for opening up your entire spinal cord and your hip simultaneously cat and cow the most loved yoga exercise is the cat and cow giving a big opening to your rib cage and a big opening to your chest for me this is an exercise i wake up to the warrior pose for big hip opening lots of focus lots of strength and a very very solid stance leg balance focuses fully on ankle strength hip mobility and a lot of focus on the balance from head to toe Welcome to this video on acupressure. Today I'm going to show you three very important points that you need to know. I want to show you something that will clear pain. I want to show you something that will clear stress. And I want to show you something that's going to energize you. This point is often called the Tylenol point. because it shifts your nervous system it clears the pain this point is right here if you open your finger in the webbing between your thumb and your first finger it's actually towards your first finger the bone and you use your thumb as a acupressure point and you press into this if you can see so it's not actually right in the middle of the web it's actually where the bone is You can press this for about 30 seconds to a minute. Maybe you can circle it around, have some fun with it, and then you do it on the other side. So you know exactly where it is. It's at this point between the webbing. You must have heard this point about this point. It's a very famous point. The next one is how do we clear stress? I think we all want to clear stress and anxiety in our lives. and when we are stressed a breath becomes short it becomes shallow breathing it's a little rapid breathing so it's very important to relax the chest area so here i would just use my fingers on my chest area between the stirs between the sternum right here and just massage and this should go on for about 2 minutes maybe 3 minutes you can go clockwise you can go anti clockwise and the third one who wants to increase their energy your vitality is very important you know in the morning when you wake up and you have a cup of coffee what's it doing it's actually stimulating your kidneys your adrenaline glands 
So we are going to do that naturally. So from where my belly button is, so where your belly button is, take a finger to the back and from here, it's just two, if you just go left and right here, you'll see this tenderness. You'll see a little point here. So you either massage this point here. I like to really energize it by dum 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 dum. Okay, hitting it. Tapping. So one by one or tapping it or massaging it is going to help invigorate your adrenaline glands to give you more vitality. So I actually started doing Ujjayani Pranayam to cure that, to make sure my thyroid wo works properly because of which my uh, other glands started getting triggered in the right way and hence that problem slowly went away coupled with my uh, lifestyle habits. Hi guys, this is Rakul and you're watching me on Health Shots talking about yoga on uh, the International Yoga Day. Um, well, you know, you'll be surprised I wasn't a yoga person at all. Uh, I, I think my journey of yoga began almost about uh, four years back, four, four, five years back. And uh, that's when I was relocating back to uh, Bombay. And I happened to meet uh, Anshuka, uh, my friend, my very, very good friend, who's also a yoga instructor. And uh, I remember telling her, I said, you know, I'm not a yoga person, but I'll give it a try because I'm this adrenaline junkie who loves working out. I love my HID sessions. And, and she said, listen, just come. And I know that within uh, five, six classes, I just got addicted to yoga so much because, you know, a lot of times it's about finding the right teacher. Um, I think for anything, whether it's a subject that you study in school or whether it's any form of fitness. And uh, she made me fall in love with yoga. And I think for the first time, I understood that yoga is not not to be viewed as a workout, but as a, I mean, of course, it is a form of workout, but then it's more than that. It's about connecting with yourself. It's about your mental sanity. It's about starting your day at a positive note with all your chakras aligned, you know, like I like to say it. And um, yeah, that's when my journey to yoga began and uh, I love yoga now. I used to think that yoga is very slow hai aur mere liye nahi hai because I, I, I am a very high intensity workout person um, but like, like I said that you need to find the right teacher, you need to find the right form, you need to be mentally prepared to adapt a certain form you know at that point in life and uh, that's what yoga did for me see I, for me it was not just doing my surya namaskars but you know it was also uh, pushing your body beyond what it was uh, ready to uh, easily get pushed to you know using the fly fit the hammock yoga that we do um, and doing all those inversions and the way you feel after that uh, the way your blood rushes to your head and the kind of adrenaline you feel after that is completely different from what you feel in the gym. So I think it's all about finding the right teacher. So I will say that people that yoga has a lot of benefits. You know, yoga has um, medicinal benefits. Yoga can and has the ability to cure you of any diseases. Um, you know, as uh, yoga is one of the oldest sciences in India. India. You know, Ayurveda and yoga go hand in hand. Um, I, ha I have personally used yoga to sort of uh, uh, get my blood work to normal when you know sometimes it yeah so there was a point that little bit here there and then you say I mean nothing off the charts but uh, but you know the asanas that they ask you to do whether it is for your adrenals or whether it is for your um, uh, thyroid or whether it is for women hormonally there's just so many things uh, if women are aware they can use yoga for so I would just say that go with a blank slate go as a blank slate let your teacher guide you through and once you find the right teacher who finds your body rhythm um, that's when it'll become interesting I 
I think healthy would be a good way to put it uh, because fit has many different ways of looking at it um you know and i'm not saying yoga will make you lose weight very fast of course it does it's extreme core balancing when you do the right form of yoga it's also pushing your body to be extremely flexible which helps us when we're dancing for songs or you know shooting and those this thing but i think for me the biggest change was like i started with saying that yoga became my sanity uh when the world is so cluttered and when you're actually in that rut of working non stop and you know with so much noise around you that one hour morning session where the only sound is of your own breath and uh, when you finish your yoga you practice with say doing some breathing exercises whether it's your pranayama or whether it's your kapalbhati or whatever um that for me was amazing you know i knew that i could take the day on with anything so no matter what i wouldn't get stressed so i think it just helps you balance your mind um and have that balance of mind and body very beautifully mind body soul no so i i mix and match uh, i i do yoga about two to three times a week generally about two times because i also have to do my strength training and you know a little bit of this and a little bit of that but i try and get in two to three days a week pehli cheez to khali panch nahi hoga no matter how hard pressed i am for time i will make time to work out because that is for myself so if in 24 hours i can't give myself an hour then Uh, I'm truly bad at time management. I would say, you know, so so no matter what time I'm working at, whether it's 6 a.m. shoot, I will make sure I do some form of workout or practice yoga in the morning, even if it's 4 a.m. Um, but having said that, five asanas that I would truly truly love are well, first to begin with Malasana, you know, which is your Indian squat position, uh, and uh, I love to do that every day. The first thing actually in the morning, even if I'm going to the gym, I sit in Malasana to. in my legs and have some blood flow in the body and stretch properly before i start any form of workout um then i love to do pigeon stretches which is for your glutes uh you know uh then of course bhujangasan which is to elongate your um uh, stomach and you know to keep your spine erect and your shoulders intact uh i love doing shoulder stand which is your halas uh, i mean uh, nay um yeah shoulder stand Uh, and then the halasan from the shoulder stand which is again amazing to have your back stretch the opposite way so i think these four four five asanas if i get in then i know that i know my body is not feeling stiff because i've covered the back i've covered the glutes i've covered the midriff shoulders so overall you're stretching everything Yeah I I love aerial yoga because you know when you have the support when you're suspended in air uh one your core balancing is uh, happening while you're doing yoga secondly the way you can achieve inversions through aerial yoga which is a complete ulta uh, where you know your blood flow to the brain the blood rush is so good it just flushes all the toxins out it just makes you feel so rejuvenated and then also if you uh, you know you can push um your stretching ability a lot more with aerial yoga because you are taking help of the aerial so you know maybe if you can stretch to say this much you can push it to a little more this much so it helps you maximize your potential and uh, that's why i love it it's the same as where there's a will there's a way uh like that like you said when you said that if you don't find time I'm saying you should find time because if you don't find for yourself you can never do it so if you truly willing to see that changes in your body if you're truly willing to see a change in yourself and not just body in your mental ability in your capacity to be able to work at full uh, optimal uh, energy levels uh, to maximize your day uh, i think you'll just see that your productivity increases you know so if you if you are willing to do that and opting uh, to give it a try then then that's the way to go but the problem is with the indian mindset or a lot of people it's very easy to say time nahi hai yaar you know are bahut busy hain 
बट किसके लिए बिजी हो माई क्वेश्चन इज इफ यू के नॉट फाइंड आउट ट्वेंटी मिनट्स थर्टी मिनट्स फॉर योर सेल्फ वॉट आर यू गो नो डू विद दैट मनी और दैट वर्क इफ योर बॉडी गिवस अप and uh, my um, advice to everyone would be that make uh, yoga a way of life make fitness a way of life it's not a fad it's not a one time thing truly strive to uh, live a healthy life anxiety ka naam to aapne suna hi hoga it doesn't just affect our mental health but our skin and hair too isliye we have got you a brave of yoga influencers that will help you deal with them all so here we present our next segment come and watch hello everyone i am shani and today i'm going to be telling you some very very simple asanas that you can include in your day to day practice to improve the health of your hair for good hair so the first thing that we're going to be doing is sitting on your heels if this is not comfortable you can go ahead and sit on a cushion as well and then from here begin to drop your head down on the floor you can take your hands by the side like this and then begin to roll yourself up bringing the crown of the head on the floor so the crown of the head gets pressed against the floor you can keep your eyes closed and just stay here for some time and then from there take your hands on the mat come in the table top position you can keep your knees hip distance apart and your hands shoulder width apart and then from here curl your toes under and begin to push your hips up and back in a downward facing dog or adho mukh konasan now as you can see this is the position in which the head is below the heart so the circulation of the blood to the head gets improved It is a great posture not only for the hair health but also to stimulate your pituitary pineal gland improve the circulation of blood to your face to all your sense organ on the face you can stay here for 5 breaths take a couple of small steps to come forward again feel free to keep your knees bent and begin to relax all the way down This is like a easy version of our forward fold. So I'm just keeping my hands like this. Drop your head down. You can look back or you can close your eyes. Again, stay here for a couple of breaths. Come all the way down. The last pose that we're going to be doing is called Sarvang Asan or Shoulder Stand. Now this is a slightly advanced pose so I'm going to give you a simple variation as well begin to lie down on your mat and you can just send your legs up like this maintaining them at 90 degree if this is also difficult you can keep your knees slightly bent like this and if you wish to go all the way up to sarvang asan then you can from here press your hands press your shoulders into the floor roll your legs back supporting your lower back begin to walk your hands on your back point your toes up come all the way up and stay here for 5 4 3 2 and one slowly and slowly exhale again how this helps is it is improving the circulation of the blood all the way down to your head relaxes your heart reduces the levels of the stress in the body so those were simple asanas that you can improve if you find the last one a little challenging you can totally skip that and do the easy version out of it i hope you like the practice thank you so much for joining namaste namaste i'm jalal dolakia i'm very happy to be at health shots where i'll be showing you a small but very effective sequence to manage and relieve yourself from the morning stiffness come into sukhasan place both your palms on your knees and start by moving the body in circles giving it nice spinal circles this is called 
moving it in clockwise directions and don't forget to go anti clockwise as well this really helps to release all that tightness in our entire spine which happens from lying down for more than 8 hours take your right hand to the right side and gently lift and stretch your left hand in a lateral with angle see that your left buttock is firmly down keep your top elbow nice and straight and feel a deep opening in the entire left side of the body Let's stay here for a few breaths. Keep looking in the front. Keep your fingertips sharp and extended. And then press this palm. Inhale, lift up and exhale. Let's repeat on the opposite side. Left hand down. Right hand is laterally stretched. Keep firmly pressing your right buttock down and right elbow nice and straight. Stay here for a few breaths. And again, push the palm. Inhale, lift your. Now we have a transition to a twist. Stick your right hand on your left knee, and the other hand behind, and twist and look back. Twisting is a very good way to release the tension from the spine. And then, after a few breaths, take both your hands up and change the side. Try to twist from your shoulders, twist from your chest, and allow your navel also to twist. You can look back as much as your neck allows you. Get the soles of your feet together. Hold your big toe. Create nice length in your spine. And you can choose to stay here, or you can even flap your thighs a little bit. Do that for a few rounds. Then lock your elbows on your thighs, and then stay in this nice forward bend. Remember, you don't want to push and pull too much. You are just trying to gently open the body. You can again choose to stay here, or if you wish to extend, you can extend your hands forward. Stay for a few breaths. And slowly walk your hands back and use your hands to bring your legs in. So walk both your hands forward. Keep your knee and your hip in one line and lower your forehead down. Keep pushing the chest down, not your lower back. Stay here for a few breaths. So just transition and take a child's pose. And slowly come back. I hope you enjoyed practicing with me. Do try these stretches early in the morning and feel perfectly nice for the entire day. Uh, I love the whole Surya Namaskar sequence firstly. I think it's, it's highly, highly sophisticated in nature. It's beautifully balanced. Uh, so that's one. The Surya Namaskar, uh, uh, you know that. I love very much the shoulder stand, which is, uh, I, I forget the name in Hindi. Uh, shoulder stand um, and I love uh, Prasarit Patakthanasana shoulder stand ka mein hai, but these three things are my favorite things I really love them a lot Namaste, I'm Ira Trivedi and welcome to Ira Yoga In today's session we're going to be focusing on back pain an extremely annoying problem which all of us, including me, suffer with at some point in our lives. Let's begin with some gentle spinal rolls. So just lie back on your mat and hug the knees to the chest. And now 
now just start rolling from side to side. Bring the knees all the way down to the side, feeling that gentle massage in your spine, just warming up your spine. You can bring your ears to the mat as well. And now rolling forward as well, you can just keep your hands on your knees or you can keep them underneath the knees, whatever you're comfortable with. And now just keep rolling. Preparing the spine for the poses that we're going to be doing. And now roll up to a seated posture and getting ready for the next. Moving on now to the cat and cow stretch. This is a beautiful posture that warms up the entire spine. Just bring the knees in line with the hips. Bring the palms in line with the shoulder and you can join your toes at the back. So you're in a tabletop here. Your chin is parallel to the ground. And now inhale and slowly stretch the chin up and arch the back down. You should feel that pressure going through your entire spine. And now exhale and slowly come down. Push the chin towards the chest as much as you can and arch the back up like a cat, like an angry cat. And now inhale and come forward again. Stretch the chin up, feeling that beautiful stretch through the entire spine. And exhale. Come down, bring the chin towards the chest as much as you can. Make sure the elbows are completely straight. And now inhale, move up, stretch up, arch the back. Stretch the chin towards the chest and arch the back up. Move on to the next pose, the Cobra Pose or Pujangasana. Just lying down now on your mat. Bring the chin down on the mat and make sure that your palms are in line with your shoulders. You can just adjust your body so that you're comfortable. Your elbows are bent and tucked in towards your body. Make sure that your starting position is correct because if your starting position is correct, the pose will be correct. And now inhale and slowly come up. Bring the chin up, bring the chest up. Don't move your elbows, keep them there. And slowly just look up. Drop the head back, stretch the chin up and stay here and breathe. Your toes are down on the mat. Make sure they're not lifted up like this but are just down on the floor and stretch up just a little bit more and stay here and breathe. Feel that compression in your entire spine. It's the beautiful stretch for your whole back working a little bit more deeply on your lower back. You're really moving up here from your lower back. Moving now on to the Ard Shalabhasana or the Locust. Keep the palms where they are and just slowly bring the right leg up. Make sure your knee is straight your toes pointed out, and exhale, come down. Now inhale, bring the left leg up as much as you can. It could just be a few inches off the mat, or it could be a little bit higher up, and exhale down. Inhale, bring the leg up, make sure your chin is rested on the ground, and exhale down. Inhale, bring the left leg up, knee straight, toe pointed out, and exhale down, last two. Inhale, right leg up, knee straight, exhale down. Inhale, left leg up, and exhale down. And now inhale, bring the right leg up and stay here for a moment. Try to bring the leg a little bit more up, feeling that stretch in your back. We're really working on strengthening the back here, the lower back and exhale down and now the left leg up stay here feeling the muscles in our lower back really working here strengthening our back so there can be no injury and exhale come down and now make a pillow of your hands one palm on top of the other bring your head on one side and bring your toes together and your ankles down the ground, creating a little bit of gap in your spine. So allowing the spine to really relax here. Remember that relaxation is as important as strengthening 
or warming up because if we don't relax, we're exposing our back to more stress. So just stay here, relax, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, breathing into the back, into the spine, feeling your breath moving through the back and spine, and exhale, down. Inhale, breathe in, breathing into your back, breathing into your spine, and exhale. Come up into a seated posture, whatever is comfortable with you. I'm sitting in Vajrasana, or lightning bolt pose. So that's it, that's how quickly your back can feel better. So thank you again for joining me on Yoga for Back Relief. Hope to see you soon next time. And on International Yoga Day, I am at Hill Shorts to share some simple yoga postures to keep our gut health maintained and in check. Now, how do we take care of our gut? We can take care of our gut with three simple steps. First one, eating home-cooked nutritious food. Second one, getting enough sleep. And third one, by practicing yoga. In today's video, I'll share some simple yoga postures that you can practice from anytime, anywhere. So without waiting further, let's roll out the mat and start the practice. The first posture is deep belly breathing. For that, simply sit down in a comfortable cross leg position, keeping your spine straight and tall, resting your palms on your knees, Rolling your shoulders backward, creating more space in the frontal part of your body, keeping the back of your neck long, spine extended, sit bones on the mat. Now gently place your right palm on the belly. As you inhale, expand your belly, fill your stomach with all the air. As you exhale, softly breathing out releasing all the air inhale observe the expansion exhale and gently observe the contraction of your abdominal muscles the second posture is malasana for that separate your right foot and left foot away from each other little more than hip distance apart Point your toes out 45 degrees, bring your hands closer to your chest, separating your knees away from each other and try to keep your spine straight and tall. If you're not able to keep your heels on the mat, what you can do is keep a rolled blanket under your heels or blocks. Otherwise, you can simply balance on your toes, take support of your palms if you feel the need and stay here for as long as you wish to. For the next posture, bend your knees, take your palms slightly backward, roll your shoulders backward, open your chest, Ardha Navasan, bring your knees closer to your chest, extend your legs, try to take your shin bone parallel to the mat, point your toes out, extend your arms if possible. And for Navasan, if it is comfortable, extend both your legs and stay here, hold and then softly release, come back to center. For the next posture, bend your right knee, keep your right foot on the outside of your left knee. Keep your left foot toes active. Take your right hand and move your right hand backward and hug your right knee with your left hand. Twist your spine and look backward. You can also stack your left shoulder against your outer right knee and you can try to hold your right foot with your left palm if that is accessible. Otherwise, keep on hugging your right knee with your left hand and stay here. Feel the twist in your spine. If this is easy for you, what you can do is you can bend your from your left knee and keep your right heel closer to your right buttock and simply either stack your left shoulder against your right outer knee and hold your right foot with your left palm or simply hug your right knee with your left hand, whatever feels more comfortable. These are simple variations that you can gently try at home. Make sure that you're working on twisting the spine and extending from the crown of your head. 
and not really pressurizing your back hand in any case to come out slowly come back to center extend your legs and release now for the next posture bend your knees and interlace your fingers around your shin bone take a deep breath in inhale and as you exhale lift your head up and try to touch your knees to your nose and stay here whenever you inhale next softly come back to center and release feel that compression around your abdominal muscle for the next posture interlace your fingers behind your head keeping your shoulders and elbows on the mat lift your knees off the mat as you exhale drop your knees to the right and look towards your left whenever you inhale lift your knees back to the center and as you exhale drop your knees to your left repeat this for 5 to 7 rounds making sure that your shoulders and your elbows are on the mat to come back simply release your legs release your hands and relax I hope this video will help you with your gut issues. For more such videos, stay tuned to healthshots.com for daily dose of wellness. I'll see you next time. Namaste. Hello friends. Swagat hai aapka Millennials ki one stop health and wellness destination Healthshots mein. एज इज जस्ट अ नंबर ये कहावत बिल्कुल चरितार्थ होती है जब हम बात करते हैं 66 साल की सर्वेश जी की गले में कैमरा लटकाए वे आपको कहीं भी नजर आ सकती हैं ऊर्जा से भरपूर सर्वेश जी हमेशा मुस्कुराती हुई नजर आती हैं क्या इस ऊर्जा के पीछे का राज योगा है चलिए उनसे पता करते हैं आइए मिलते हैं सीनियर फोटो जर्नलिस्ट सर्वेश जी से आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है हेल्थ शॉर्ट्स में शुक्रिया धन्यवाद थैंक यू तो क्योंकि आप योग कर रही हैं काफी सालों से तो आपकी आपके सफर के बारे में जानना चाहेंगे इसकी शुरुआत कैसे हुई योग का ऐसा कोई सफर नहीं है क्योंकि मेरे को अपनी हेल्थ से ठीक रखना था तो इसलिए मैंने योग ट्रैकिंग ट्रैकिंग का मुझे शौक था घूमने का शौक था तो मैं ट्रैकिंग करने लगी तो इसका सफर तो ऐसा मैं क्या बताऊं कि हाँ तो जीवन का एक जैसे खाना जरूरी है ऐसे योग जरूरी है तो मुझे 25 से साल पच्चीस साल से ज्यादा हो गया और मैं शीर्षासन कर लेती हूँ अब अब जरा ज्यादा रेगुलर करने लगी हूँ क्योंकि जो जो उम्र बढ़ती है आप अपने आप को ठीक रखना चाहते हैं तो उसमें ज्यादा केयर करनी पड़ती है जी जैसे आपको ये जरूरत लगती है कि योग जीवन का हिस्सा है पर कई लोगों के लिए योग उनके जीवन का हिस्सा नहीं है ये उसको एक जीवन के हिस्से के रूप में नहीं देखते हैं ये वे देखते हैं कि ये योग मतलब उन्होंने अभी करना शुरुआत भी नहीं की है तो आप उन लोगों को क्या कहना चाहेंगे जिन्होंने अभी योग की शुरुआत भी नहीं की और जो इसके महत्व को अभी तक नहीं समझ पाए जो ये नहीं समझते कि जीवन का हिस्सा है देखिए अगर जैसे खाना जरूरी है आप अपने आप को अगर ठीक रखना चाहते हैं तो योग और ट्रैकिंग ये सब जरूरी है अगर आप अपने आप को हेल्थी रखना चाहते हैं स्वस्थ रखना चाहते हैं नहीं तो बहुत सारी बीमारियां हो जाएंगी बहुत सारे घुटनों में दर्द गुट मेरे भी होता है लेकिन मैं उसको हावी नहीं होने देती मैं डिसिप्लिन के साथ चलती हूँ अच्छी डाइट लेती हूँ डाइट अच्छी इन देंस मतलब मैं खाना ज्यादा नहीं खाती डिसिप्लिन में खाती हूँ रात का खाना नहीं खाती मैं तो जो जो उम्र बढ़ती है आपको और ज्यादा ध्यान रखना है अपनी हेल्थ को अगर आपको ठीक रहना है तो एक बात आप बताइए कि आप इतने सालों से योग कर रही हैं तो योग महज सिर्फ कुछ मूवमेंट्स कुछ एक्सरसाइजेस का संकलन है कि ये उससे बढ़कर है नहीं देखिए योग से मैं एक बात बता दू मुझे माइग्रेन था बहुत ज्यादा तो बीच में मैंने कुछ दिन छोड़ दिया था उस अब मैं जो ये करती हूँ कपाल भारती वगैरह मेरा माइग्रेन बिल्कुल ठीक हो गया है देखिए योग से ये मेरे को बहुत फायदा हुआ है मेरा माइग्रेन ठीक हो गया मैं कोई दवाई नहीं लेती हूँ मेरा बहुत सीवियर माइग्रेन था तो ये देखिए मेरा ठीक हुआ उसके सांस की मैं कुछ एक्सरसाइज करती हूँ तो मेरा माइग्रेन बिल्कुल ठीक हुआ ये ये योग से ही हुआ है फिर योग से 
जो मैं एक्सरसाइज करती हूँ मेरे भी घुटनों में दर्द होती है क्योंकि मेनो पास हो जाता है तो थोड़ा थोड़ा हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम आ जाती है तो उसको मैं काफी सारी चीजें अपने योग से करती हूँ मैं एक्सरसाइज करती हूँ घुटनों की मेरे को भी ऐसा नहीं है कि ऑपरेशन कराना पड़े कुछ नहीं मेरे मेरी कैल्शियम में थोड़ी सी ये आ गई है तो मैं कैल्शियम की गोली जरूर खाती हूँ उसके साथ साथ हेल्दी फूड भी लेती हूँ जैसे नारियल पानी ले लिया तो ये अलग अलग आपको अपने हिसाब से ये करना है आपको अपने आप जिंदगी सिखा देती है अंत में आप हमारी ऑडियंस के लिए आप योग दिवस पर क्या संदेश देना चाहेंगी आपके जीवन जीने की कला क्या है एक टिप जो आपको बहुत मतलब आप सबके साथ शेयर करना चाहें जिसने आपको बहुत मदद किया हो अपनी जिंदगी में जिंदगी बार बार नहीं मिलेगी इसे जियो अच्छे से जियो बार बार नहीं मिलने की सब यही रह जाएगा पल जो भी पल जी सको आप इन पचरों में ना पड़ के आप जिंदगी को जियो हर चीज का समय योगा भी करो आप खाने पीने का भी अच्छा जो जो उम्र बढ़ती है इंसान की क्यों क्यों आप अपने आप को और डिसिप्लिन में रहना चाहिए जियो और जीने सर्वेश जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका कि आप हमारे साथ इस सेगमेंट में जुड़ी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम फेस योगा इन्वॉल्व मसाज एंड एक्सरसाइजेस दैट स्टिमुलेट द मसल स्किन एंड लिम्फेटिक सिस्टम ही इज अ स्टेप बाय स्टेप गाइड बाय योगा इन्फ्लुएंसर वैशाली ऑन हाउ वन कैन स्ट्रेंथन फेस मसल Hey there I'm Vishali a face yoga instructor and today on this occasion of International Yoga Day I'm at Health Shots to tell you a little about face yoga and show you some massage that can help you get rid of the puffiness in the morning let's get started with the massage that can help you deep puff your face in the morning always remember one thing before you do any massage or facial yoga exercises make sure your hands are properly washed and your face clean without makeup so we always start from our neck fist up your hands and slowly knuckle on your neck this helps you stretch your muscles down soothes out the wrinkles on your neck and get your lymphatic drainage system started take your index and middle finger and knuckle around your jawline remember you can put a little pressure here not too much and just move it along side towards your hairline pressing against the bone fist up your hands and move in an upward direction no pressure no pressure whatsoever This helps you lift up your face and works on your entire cheek area. Take your index finger, knuckle it around your nose. Now, whenever you're working on your nose, make sure to make an O from your mouth so that you stretch the muscles. Also, this area helps in. getting rid of the congestion so if you have sinus problem you can knuckle it more on the center here where the bone is this can help you get rid of the congestion now take your index finger again and no pressure whatsoever just move along your dark circles towards the temple no pressure around your eyes just pushing your muscles up getting the lymphatic drain system started helping deep up the muscles around the eyes stay there and now again with the index finger knuckle and lift your eyebrows up towards the arc and down up and down just keep doing it it's relaxing helps you open your eyes creates a distance between the eyebrows and the eyes and shapes your eyebrows 
and now we're going to straighten our forehead muscles again use your index finger and knuckle it in an upward direction last but not the least we'll scissor around our ears and relax hope you like this and hope this massage helps you deep up your face see ya yoga kisi ko boring lagta hai to kisi ko mushkil but as a beginner you should have patience and consistency here's a session for all of you beginners to take one more step towards a healthier lifestyle health shots and i'm going to be talking about all things health fitness and happiness and everything in between very late actually much later than people actually think i started yoga um because in the first lockdown i remember on my feed on instagram i used to see all these people doing these really cool yoga things i had never done yoga in my life um i've always been relatively flexible um and you know i have very little regard for my own personal safety so i uh, was like i think i can do it i'm just going to try it so i tried it in many ways and i uploaded these cool things and back then in each post i would write that i don't know yoga i am just attempting cool poses that i am seeing so don't like do it this way or any of that because i don't know what i'm doing um and that went on for quite a while until in the second lockdown i was uh, stuck in goa at that point cuz nothing was happening in bombay and everything that was like a really hard sad time and you know second lockdown was really really hard on a lot of people and i was in yoga and i was in uh, goa and i was like uh, you know maybe i should actually start doing yoga during this period and um i met a wonderful teacher that was also goa based at that point and um we started training together and it was just 
amazing and it just took off and so since the second lockdown is when i've been doing yoga consistently um but when i go into shoots and all of that i've not been very good about carrying the practice with me um and actually being diligent even when i'm working um but i think i need to start incorporating that also into my life it has slowly slowly become a bigger and bigger part of my life also it's about um you have to decide what your goal is going into it yoga can be exactly what you need it to be like when i started yoga um in the second lockdown i remember it was after i put out put on my first lockdown weight because that time you're fully trapped and all of that and i was like i need to just like you know get all this off and to find a form of exercise and i met my yoga teacher and i uh, looked at her and i was like i'm going to be very straightforward i am don't want to do any inner peace meditation all of that all of that fine i'll figure it out in other ways i said what i want to do is i want a really killer workout i said give me a killer workout within yoga and she was like okay and that's exactly what we did and now it's reached a point where at the start of every class we'll discuss how i'm feeling uh what we feel like doing whether it's a more stretchy um day whether it's a more you know just flow with it whether it's a more light day whether we want to really burn today so based on that we just decide what we want to do and we flow with that and um i do my yoga without any fan without any ac in this hot humidity so you land up sweating buckets so you also feel really fresh after it um so uh, yoga is an intense workout if you want it to be it can be a very calming practice if you want it to be it can be absolutely anything you want it to be and that's the beauty of it and you won't know it until you actually start it and get into it and decide what you like so okay in a lot of ways yoga you know i like to start my day with it whenever i can um so it gives me the energy for the day and all of that but more than that honestly for me what i love about yoga is um i always discover new things that i can do that i never knew my body could do uh it gives me an opportunity to push myself to challenge myself to know that i started at a certain level and now my leg reaches here you know like all these little milestones is what i love about it I love that I can challenge myself that I can compete with older versions of myself that could only do so much um I love that I love the fact that you can constantly grow constantly learn um there's always something new and also at the same time you're doing something that's really wholesome for your whole body Do it under the supervision of a trained professional uh because you know you you have one body you have to take care of it nicely don't be reckless uh um even though i am usually quite reckless but now that i have wonderful people to guide me i now realize the correct way to do things um so do it with a trained professional take it step by step don't be impatient with yourself because it will be one random day where you surprise yourself and you'll just be able to do it um so just be patient patient keep with the practice and do it with people that you resonate with the yeah, i got uh, quite lucky in the sense that i for how little i actually take care of my um i'm one of those people see this is why i can do things like lifts and all very nicely in dance because like i'm not bothered i'm like ha oh, just throw my body it'll come you'll catch me i won't fall like you know there's this inherent just faith ki it'll just be okay luckily for me what i realized what works for me is that i know how to fall out of things somehow i think it was like the gymnastics that i used to do or whatever it was but i know the correct way to fall out of something now that's usually where people get very stuck that is where most of the injury will happen when you fall out of something wrong and you're not able to you know fall correctly or you land on something you're not supposed to land on um because i know how to fall firstly there's a lot less fear in my head and secondly i know that i'll never get injured that bad at least till now that would um but uh you know i feel like if you just listen to your body your body will tell you how far it wants to go uh so any time i feel like i'm really overdoing it i'll be like okay fine you know that's it honestly anything see i like top one overall is inversions so when i'm ulta and um because no matter how many times you do it it's always that surprise factor to it there'll be days where it surprises you badly where you, you can do a headstand 99% of the time but that day your balance is fully off 
or there'll be a day where you can suddenly do something totally new in it and you'll feel so strong that you'll be able to do crazy things with your legs while you're upside down. Um, I love the surprise element of it and the unpredictability and also the possibility with it. Um, so anything upside down is amazing. Uh, but uh, other than that, honestly, anything, it's always something new. It's always like a new challenge. See, once I get something, then after that, it's not... Uh, as exciting then it's like oh yeah that old thing of course and then I can just do it so I feel like anytime I'm doing something new for the first time that's my favorite um, until I find something else that then excites me so it's always just new the locust pose I don't know what it's called in Hindi but I find it very effective uh, over the long run if you keep doing it and uh, what else can I can I say the pranayam or the whole pranayam series the Anulom Vilom, Hastrika, um, Agni Sarpia. I love pranayams. You know, I feel like a Kapal Bhati. I love. I feel like I'm. I'm wide awake. It's like coffee for me with the whole pranayam series. I do these five every other day. Kalyan ho. हम सभी ने बचपन में ये शब्द जरूर सुना होगा. योग असल में इसी शब्द की मेंटल, फिजिकल और इमोशनल प्रैक्टिस है. पिछले सत्रह वर्ष से वेलनेस के लिए काम कर रहे योगा कोच और फिटनेस इंस्ट्रक्टर नम्रता मैनन इंटरनेशनल योगा डे के इस आयोजन में आज हमारे साथ हैं ओवरऑल हेल्थ और वेलनेस के लिए योग किस तरह काम करता है इस मुद्दे पर उनसे बात कर रही हैं शिप्रा यादव Everyone, we have here with us Namrata Menon, a seasoned yoga practitioner with over 22 years of experience in practicing and teaching yoga. She has been inspiring many of us with her practice over these years. Namrata is a corporate consultant and she is also a yoga trainer. All right. So, Namrata, you've been practicing yoga for over two decades. So, what inspired you to quit your professional life and to hang your boots and to follow uh, your passions and to practice yoga and to teach yoga to so many people? So, I know this sounds like a cliche, but I think I was basically bored. I was bored of selling soap and shampoos, and I think I wanted to do something more meaningful and exciting in my life. and that's why probably i went in the direction that i did we want to understand then how have you incorporated yoga in your daily life and was it challenging for you to do that um, just some uh, insights on how we can do it uh, for ourselves as well so incorporating yoga into your daily life is not so difficult at all i mean in my personal case i quite like the lifestyle and the habitual changes that you make when you become a practitioner of yoga so uh, it depends on the kind of lifestyle you have been having yoga is just about getting in touch with nature once again so if you are able to get your habits your daily life your way of going about your work and your family into tandem and into in step with nature you will find that it's not so difficult to incorporate yoga into your daily life so what were the challenges um, that you faced initially you know like quitting your job and taking up yoga so was there like any struggle initially i don't think i consciously thought that at this point in time now i'm giving up my job and i'm doing yoga you know so a lot of things happen to individuals because they are organic in their life some of those things happen unconsciously some of them happen consciously and things happen changes happen when the time has come for them so i think life prepares you and you also start preparing yourself way in advance of the time when you actually make a change right so uh, in the sense that yoga was an unorganized sector when i started it and people with my kind of background and qualifications were rare in this kind of an industry it was to that extent unfamiliar territory uncharted territory but if i look back probably the adrenaline was much higher because i did things which probably a lot of people would not have dared to do and 
uh, may have been overawed in doing and uh, i think the process taught me a lot and i think i'm happy that i did whatever i did so i don't know if that answers your question but yes it does how it was and the the happiness the joy is palpable um, it reflects um, in in your work and uh, your personality as well I, we can feel the aura so namrata yoga people think of uh, typically as a form of exercise and they associate yeah. it with physical fitness but they don't yeah. understand the mental benefits of it as well the mental and emotional yeah. gains that you can get from practicing yoga can you yeah. uh, share some information on how yoga is also important for our mental health sure so that's the most important thing which creates so much confusion when people are looking at alternate forms of fitness actually you cannot compare yoga with other forms of fitness at all because most forms of fitness are looking at a physical fitness perspective whereas yoga is actually defined as a science of mind control so even techniques of yoga like asanas and physical kriyas like surya namaskar as well as breathing techniques and meditative kriyas are all trying to actually reach your mind and your brain and how they do it is each technique of yoga affects your blood circulatory system your endocrine system and your nervous system they have been designed to positively affect these systems which in turn affect positively the way in which your brain function is happening our mind is nothing else but a state of how our brain is functioning right so uh, you know i have also been practicing yoga on and off and initially i i had this thing that oh i should do power yoga i should do hot yoga and you know as you were saying that people consider it as an alternative form of um, fitness and often ignore the fact that it also helps us uh, with uh, keeping our mind fit and i realized it myself over a period of time that yoga is actually helping me becoming a more calmer person do my mom thinks otherwise <laughs> she thinks like abhi yoga karke aayi hai phir bhi gussa kar rahi hai <laughs> yeah so actually that 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 is one misunderstanding that you can actually be physically fit uh in spite of Uh, not paying attention to your mental fitness that cannot happen right. so vice versa can happen you can be mentally fit mm-hmm. and also physically fit but it is not possible in the long run to focus on physical fitness and not be mentally fit because sooner or later your brain takes over control of your physical body i have a related question you know uh, when you are trying to meditate and do shavasan and when um, the yoga instructor is telling you to uh, relax and uh, focus on every part of your body and not to really have your mind wander so that's the time when my mind is wandering and you know thinking of all the things possible or oh, i have a meeting or oh, i have this deadline so how do how do i train my mind and how does yoga help us in training our mind okay so you mentioned two very different things okay one is meditation meditation is a very big word mm-hmm. uh, in yoga Uh, this is the area which is connected to dhyan the closest word to dhyan in english is meditation and the second thing you mentioned was shavasan okay these are two completely different things okay. shavasan is a technique which is used to relax you okay just in order shavasan is one of the postures which emulates a person being like a corpse and the reason for that is that till you can physically first completely still yourself relax yourself there is no way in which you can mentally do it 
your physical uh, calm is going to come into your mental framework so shavasan is a technique is a posture which is used a lot in order to relax yourself to relax the body and in doing so relax the mind too as far as meditation is concerned it is one arm out of eight parts of yoga and it deals with direct thought control how do you control the kind of images and thoughts out of those images in your brain it's mm-hmm. a completely different branch of yoga it is interconnected in the sense we are integrated so you can't remove one part of us from the other but right. actually yoga has eight parts to it but when you're doing meditation it's very very important to have a spine which is erect okay so meditation is only done in meditational postures not in shavasana wow so i've never thought of it like that <laughs> thank you so much for that answer i think it will help me a lot uh, with my practice as well so namrata this year's theme for international yoga day is yoga for humanity so what are your views on how yoga can impact humanity in general sure so it's quite obvious that there's a lot of unrest in the world today shikra right there's war and there is lots of environmental pollution there's climate change and of course there's a recent pandemic which we have still not completely got out of and with all this pandemonium there is the result that has happened to society and individuals which is that there's a lot of emotional mental trauma there's depression there's anger there's lots of violence which is happening uh, around us yoga in the midst of all this is somewhat like a balm it's like a medicine it helps you yogic techniques basically help you to calm your mind to temper yourself bring equanimity into your life they also in a very big way help to cleanse and purify your system physically and physiologically in an environment which is extremely polluted and so it helps you to open up either blocked or dormant energies and it infuses new it invigorates you infuses new vigor into your life energizes you and helps you to face a world which is very difficult sometimes much better yes it's it's important that we also um take yoga as something beyond religion and it's just beautiful that how people across uh, nations and of various um, backgrounds and religions are you know practicing yoga and incorporating yoga in their daily lives so as you rightly said that it's sure. become even more important now for us to uh, let me clarify this yoga has nothing to do with religion yoga is a science and it's defined as in sanskrit yoga ha chitta ha vritti nirodha ha which means it's a science which helps you to prevent your mind from fluctuations it's a science of mind control it has nothing to do with any religion whatsoever it is believed that yoga can also aid in weight loss but not in the same way as going to the gym or as cardio maybe so what are your thoughts on this so uh frankly this has got nothing to do with my thoughts this is all scientific okay as far as gym or cardio or pilates or anything else is concerned they are primarily dealing with your exterior being okay they are dealing with your change in your physical persona but if you have to not only lose weight but sustain it you need to support any physical change with a mental emotional and physiological change too 
right that's where yoga comes in yoga is not a quick fix it's a long term hand holding style which will help you achieve any objective say weight loss or you want to tone yourself better or you want to look better yoga is something which will teach you not just how to do it but how to make it last it's a long term companion it's not a short term fix right so um, would you call it uh, as long term therapy for the mind of course i would i would go much one step further yoga is not just the therapy for the mind yoga is the science which first teaches you what is the mind hmm. how does it work it's only once you know that that you can actually go about doing what you want with your mind most of the time things that are happening to us we are not able to control if we are angry we are really angry if we are sad we are miserable if we are depressed you know we want to die we don't control these things whereas yoga teaches you how to control them it teaches you to understand what your mind consists of why it works against or for you and it teaches you through its techniques how to make it work for you that's what yoga is all about so are there any one any particular yoga asanas that are your favorite um or you find them challenging despite so many years of practice so um chitra uh, do you know there are 84 lakh asanas in yoga 84 lakh wow yeah and um uh each asan is actually a journey in self discovery any asan even the simplest one okay and once you are on that journey of self discovery it's like an addiction there is no end you can do the same asan for the next 10 years and you can never actually perfect it even the simplest of asans what is a simple asan and what is a complicated asan has nothing to do with the poor asan it has to do with your ego that's all in yoga one of the things that we always learn to try and rid ourselves of or at least to contain and control is our ego so there is no such thing as a difficult and an easy asan a better asan and a less better asan it is just the way you decide to look at it and you made a, a very valid point uh, once we bring in our ego um and let that take over the practice um yeah because i tend to do that so uh, namrata i have a related question there's so many yeah. instagram influencers who are doing all these yoga asanas and uh, they do these challenging asanas um so a lot of us who are just looking at them and following them on instagram tend to want to be like them and do follow their practice so how do we draw a balance like how do we identify a yoga practice that is suitable to us and that's something that's something that we should do and not just blindly follow some influencers yeah so your question actually hides a lot of complicated things about human beings the first thing is that you must understand that in today's world we consciously build up the ego you know, uh, from the time a child is born and as you grow up whether it's your background your home the name that you're given uh, you know the school you go to the kind of education you have everything actually is a very very planned way of building this huge mammoth ego in all of us and when you know you are in some kind of a crisis or when you are suddenly shaken in your life suddenly a lot of things which were uh, which was something which were built into your system suddenly seem to you know uh, have no meaning that's when people start looking at sciences like yoga and start trying to look inward and trying to figure out what's happening to them because all the given rules don't seem to hold anymore so this ego is something 
which you require in the external world when you need to differentiate yourself from others it's as simple as that so how you choose anything in your life for instance why did i choose to leave the corporate sector and do yoga you know how you choose depends on where you're coming from what you want okay right and if you decide to choose to be a little honest then you will definitely choose wisely when it's not just fitness programs or what people are doing but you would like to go into the depth or whatever it is you want to spend your time learning or doing because time is short right chipra yes so you don't want to waste it in ending up doing something which you really didn't want to do so yes, absolutely yeah yeah um. So uh, so friends that was Namrata sharing her experience um with yoga her practice over two decades and how she believes that yoga is for the mind body and soul thank you namrata for being a part of our yoga festival and sharing so many wonderful insights on yoga and the practice and how yoga is for everyone how yoga is in our blood and it's a long term party as you said and it's not something that we should look at as an alternative form of exercise but something that we should incorporate in our daily lives and embrace it thank you so much thank you, thank you so Namrata. much shipta for having me thank you very much thank nice. you god bless god bless what enriching conversations on yoga and its wonders It has been a pleasure for HD Health Shots to host this International Day of Yoga special today. Here's to staying healthier, stronger and happier every day. For your daily dose of wellness on yoga and more, stay tuned.